Welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T, Tom Block and Coach Jimbo Fisher. And for a third straight week, the news is very good. Obviously, uh, the competition level steps up. You get yes. into the ACC, and when you look at the final result, 52 to nothing, it was impressive, Jimbo. It, it really was. I, I thought all three phases did a great job. I thought our special team set the tone with our coverages and, again, brought another punt return back. Got us going for our second touchdown. I thought uh, Case and Beatty kicked the ball extremely well. Mm -hmm. Dustin kicked the ball extremely well. I uh, really liked our, and our coverage teams did, did a phenomenal job. I think defense was very suffocating. I think we, we controlled the line of scrimmage. Those guys were dominant on the line of scrimmage and allowed us to do some things in the secondary. And we contested some very tight throws. Our guys, we mixed in some man and bracketed some coverages and did a tremendous job. I thought our defense did a good job. And then after the first, after we got our feet settled on offense, we had a couple miscues early on some missed assignments, which is very uncharacteristic and we need to get fixed and then start off a little better. I thought we ran the ball extremely well. Yeah, obviously did, particularly Chris Thompson, and we'll yes. see that when we come back and get into our first half highlights. What a uh, welcome back party for the Seminole senior running back. First half highlights are up next. We're just getting started here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics. And we're back on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. Florida State 2-0. Wake Forest comes in 2-0. It's the ACC opener. And uh, all you have to do is mention Wake Forest. It certainly is going to get your players' attention given uh, recent history in this series. And your team was ready to play. They really were. It was a big challenge. One, we knew that uh, Wake was a very good football team. They just, they've won two very close games, but gets a good opponent. one good opponent in North Carolina was a very quality opponent. Knew they had good players. They played us well, beat us last year. And they knew they would be a very well-coached team. And we were going to have to go out and play a very good football game. Well, it was Military Appreciation Day as yes. FSU takes the field. Special day, and uh, we'll get into the highlights. And I'd like to say a special thanks to the military people who do what they do so we can have the freedoms in our country. That, that, that's such a big deal, and that's very important to us. That's a great – I'm going to tell you what, our kickoff team, coverage team, set the tone. Everything was inside the 20. Our do, lines are dominating. Here they got a little push up. Telvin Smith, we're in a little two tampa. That's your middle linebacker running back there on the post and breaking it up. Now, that's pretty good coverage. EJ right here, this is a big – this ball's got a chance to hit a seam right here early, the second play of the game and hit a big – we had great field position and could have converted here. We had a missed route. We ran – we got a signal. It wasn't a missed route, more than a missed signal. EJ was waiting for the guy to do something else. He got to signal something else, and we messed it up and uh, blew some good field position. But watch this right here. Tyler Hunter, we kick it up. Case and Beatty does a tremendous job, and we cover that thing. Now here, we lost contain. And unfortunately, got a horse collar right here and uh, let them out of the 10. But then our, they got to move and had one big run right here. And again, here, if they do break it, you got to have speed to go get it. And that's what Joyner did. Now regroup. Get your feet back on the ground and, and, and get back and play some ball there. Look at Xavier in 20. That 20 can cover some ground now when he gets over the top. And 27, great coverage there by Xavier Rhodes. Vince Williams, you can see him right there, had a great day. Great play by Tyler Hunter, good hit by Joyner. Tyler Hunter played their number, the big receiver who was leading the country in receptions man-to-man -man all day and played him great. There's that guy again, Bjorn Warner on the pressure and uh, just making plays. Here we had a little slip screen. Great job. Kenny Shaw needed to get that guy cut. But then we get Rashad Green the ball. We get him going down the sideline. We come off our own 10. We had two drives inside our own 10 that we converted into touchdowns, which was huge. We changed around. Short yardage here, third and one and a half. James Wilder getting the ball. Nice play, getting about 15, 20 yards around the corner. Great job blocking by our left side of our offensive line and Nick O'Leary at tight end. Here run a little option play. Jay gets a good pitch back out here to Wilder. Again, just keeping things mixed up against the blitz. Option is always something good to do against blitz teams. Here, EJ had a little pressure. Wish, uh, this is one EJ should have set his feet. He got a little antsy and, and had, a little, had a tight end combination with the back, and I thought he should have hit it for a first down, but we didn't. Again, though, great coverage. Terrence Smith, who's having a great year for us, playing down. Now we start dominating the line of scrimmage. Great job by Terrence Brooks filling up from his safety spot, coming down, playing like a linebacker. They throw the quick screen, a little flat pass there. Nick Wasem comes up and makes a big hit. Uh, great play uh, for us. Right, we get a nice run right here. Chris Thompson pops a 30-some yard run. Line, our offensive line with uh, – uh, the left side, uh, Cam Irving, Josue Matias. Uh, the right side uh, uh, being uh, 
Uh, Trey Johnson. Yeah, Trey, Trey Jackson. I could even Trey, Trey Jackson. Jackson and Glaus. I was trying to make sure who was in there. And, of course, Stork at center, they did a great job along with Nick O'Leary. Run the option play against the Blitz again. EJ picks up the uh, touchdown. It was, a good, it was a good mixer right there we had. Great job up front. There's uh, uh, look like Everett Dawkins and uh, McAllister, those guys in there making great plays. Here we get the big punt return. Make one guy miss, number 80, gets a, gets a nice little sidestep, and then he gets in green grass, and he's going. He just outruns everybody. That's his second punt return for a touchdown. Rashad, that's, that's big time. We keep those coming now. When you can win that field position battle and then all of a sudden score on special teams, that's big time. First Seminole since 2005 to take two to the house on punt Is returns. Is that right? I, I didn't realize Will, that. Willie Reed the last one, yeah. Wow. That's, that's a great job. I mean, he's, he's having a huge role for us. Our, our, our punt return team is doing a great job. Eddie Grant's doing a great job with our special teams and our running backs. Yeah, he's fun to watch in open field. No he really question. is. They're an empty. Look at Bjorn getting pressure. They got they isolated the linebacker here. Christian Jones was good coverage. Christian just closed down on the receiver. Uh, Christian can run very well. There they get a little screen. We all read it. Great job of running up there, Bjorn and uh, Christian Jones and Xavier all over there. Watch it. Watch it. Amp McLeod and those guys just stringing that ball out. Great job, Christian. Great job, Telvin Tyler Hunter, Tank Caradine who had two and a half sacks in the game, doing a great job. EJ on the mix here. Got a little stretch play to Chris. Get it up in the hole, get about seven or eight yards, get a nice drive going right here, and uh, we we'll start taking control of the game and taking control of the line of scrimmage. Here, right here, both tackles got beat. We had a double move. EJ's getting ready to check it down to his third receiver as an outlet. They covered our double move down the field, and both tackles got beat. But he still can't fumble the football. Got to keep two hands on that ball, and we can't let that happen. Here they had, we kept good leverage on the ball and uh, got it bounced outside. There's Bjorn was standing him up, blitzing him a little bit, and Tank got a great sack right here. Tank had a great game. There's, there's uh, Timmy Journey can be in physical. And the inside guys, the outside guys got the sack, but the inside guys did a great job of pushing the pocket. EJ here on the quarterback run. We're coming off our own, too. We get, I like to see him just go ahead and get out of bounds. No reason to get tackled right there. And got us off the goal line for a nice 15-yard gain and got things going. I think the next play, Chris Thompson pops his first long run. Great job blocking right here by Rashad Green. Gets on the receiver. I guess on the DB, excuse me. And then Chris just breaks him. What Chris does here, he keeps he – didn't, he didn't dance. He let the guy come to him before he made the cut and made him run hard and then cut back, and Chris had great breakaway speed. And that's, he had two runs of over 70 yards for touchdowns, and uh, that's big time in one game. I've heard you say that he was as significant a loss for your team last year as anybody, and when you watch what he did this past weekend, you can see why you make that comment. And not just big plays, but the stability he brings. The, the, the picking up blitzes, telling everybody what to do on the field. Nick Moody ran through a double team earlier, then hit their off-returner block and then knocked him in the, into the returner and made the tackle. Ran over three people <laughs> on the play on our return. He and uh, Carlos Williams, those guys, they were bringing it down the field. Tank care down on another sack, a great day for him. Yeah, they're trying to hit a little trickery. Here's what we did a great job of, I think, all down defense. Kept great leverage on the ball, didn't fall for tricks, kept somebody back in center mm -hmm. field, didn't give them the trick plays. Here we go, the very next time. Watch, now watch KB right here. Watch, 12 gets a cut, then KB takes the guy clear out of bounds right here. The receiver took him out of bounds. Kenny Shaw gets a block down the field. Our line did a great job. Lonnie Pryor, like, always did a great job. But Jared, uh, Scooter Hagen's got a cut on his guy. And watch KB take his guy clear off the bench. See him going out of the picture right there. And then Kenny Shaw hustling down the field, keeps the, did a great job of walling it. There's three big-time blocks by receivers. That that's what makes long touchdown runs. Line gets you five, backs make guys miss, but those receivers getting those downfield blocks. Nine carries, 197 yards, a 21.9-yard average for Chris Thompson. Wow. Not a bad day's work. Here we, had, we got a penalty afterwards for Coach Trickett getting ran over on the sideline. <laughs> he got ran over hard on the official. <laughs> I had to laugh, but it was funny. He, so uh, we had to kick off from the 20, and, of course, Dustin kicked it all the way back and landed on the three-yard line. Here we are again doing a good job storking, and we get a little screen action. Nice job. Watch our guys out here. Trey, Trey Jackson getting a great block. There we go down the field. All There's Brian Stork getting a block. We pick up a third and 10, pick up about 18 or 20 yards down right before the half. Wilder's getting a uh, run up in here. Gets down to the two. This is the only disappointing thing in the game right now. We got down in short yardage. And what happened in the first run? If he bounces that ball two holes to the left, he walks in the end zone. It was a missed cut. Then we had two missed assignments up front on the next two plays, and that was very disappointing in our goal line. We have to get that ironed out very quickly. Was not happy with that. Great job here, Telvin and uh, Bjorn keeping great leverage on the ball in a speed sweep. Here they are getting a rush. Oh, they called that pass interference on Tyler. Said he was holding, I believe. I think that's more they might have called a penalty. And uh, has left time just barely on him, and it probably was a good call. Uh, great job by Vince Williams. Vince, I thought Vince really stood out to me in that ball game. Really played physical, covered well. Great pressure up inside. I thought we had a hold there on Tankers. Tyler Hunter coming across, getting a good tackle. Joiner, guys swarming the ball. Christian Jones, uh, Vince Williams, Nick Moody, everybody just getting to that football. They go forward on fourth and one, and we cover them down big time. Ronald Darby mans the guy up. We get the slot with Tyler Hunter, and they couldn't get the pick route, and 
we get back in play. Get another little screen. Great job. They brought blitz. We had it. We get one block down there. We were going to come out on this screen. This screen was inches from breaking bigger than the last one. But we have a great two-minute drive before the half. EJ right here picks up a crossing route to uh, Scooter across the middle. Great job. Picks up the first down. And we, we start moving the ball here in two minutes. Get a nice third and ten. We, you know, we would say, okay, third and ten. Let's get a little closer field goal. They're going, we had a chance they were going to blitz, play Oki, play three down. Good time to run it. And we pop the first down. Then we come right back on a scramble. They had pressure right here. EJ makes a great play, scrambles out, and finds Rodney Smith in the corner of the end zone. A little bit of uh, you know, him just ad-libbing on the play, which was good. They had, he went to throw the corner route. They had us covered, but we, we missed a block up inside. EJ's a big, strong guy, though, and did a great job of keeping his eyes up. And Rodney did a good job on the scramble room. We got a uh, touchdown right before the half, which kind of put that game at 38 to nothing. It's always good to get to a momentum going into half. Yeah, 38 nothing, and yeah, you particularly like to finish a, a half strong. And uh, I mean, that was a, a you mentioned the goal line disappointment there, but 38 nothing. That's a pretty good first two quarters of ACC. It football. really was. I mean, we played great defense. Had a punt return for touchdown. We scored, uh, I guess, uh, what 31 points on offense. Uh, had one turnover, which is disappointing, but there, there's still some things in the passing game we have to clean up. We have to get some routes timed up right and get our protection, but you know, we're running the football. We'll keep those play action. We'll get better this week at those things. Let's take a look back at the biggest play of the first half brought to you by AT&T. This is the second of Chris Thompson's long runs, the 80-yarder. What was it about how Wake set up defensively that made this play the perfect they uh, fought, recipe? They three, four, and the way they played it, we were doing a good job of getting on the nose, and we were stretching, and Lonnie was doing a good job on that back, and our guards were athletic enough to climb to their linebackers at second level and push them and we were getting displaced, and sometimes it was a stretch play, but it was cutting all the way back in the B-gap, like where a zone play, an inside zone play would go. But it was allowing the blocking, and, and, and our guys were doing a good job of displacing those guys, and then we blocked downfield very well. Yeah, as you pointed out with the receiver. So Chris Thompson uh, comes back against the team that he suffered a broken yes. back last year and just has a terrific game. Congratulations to Chris. Great effort. First half, all Florida State, 38 nothing. but we still have second half highlights to come. So stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. It's time for Inside the Helmet presented by Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. Um, my name is Christian Green. Um, I'm a wide receiver. I'm a hometown of Tampa, Florida and um, went to Tampa Catholic High School. Um, any other position, um, well, I played as a quarterback, so obviously, I mean, I think that would be the position that I would probably play as quarterback. Um, first of all, I understand, I think I understand a little bit how um, difficult the quarterback position is. Um, I think everybody looks at the quarterback position and be like, oh, he should have made that throw. He should have, I was open. But me being back there, I think I can understand a little bit about, you know, understanding how to go through your reads and progressions and, you know, a coach being in your ear. So um, I don't know about that at this level, but I mean, at the high school level, I know I had a little bit of experience with that. So um, hitting tennis, um, well, I think I can sing, but. You know, that's for everybody else to judge. Um, one reverse for for me, just that person he is off the field. Um, you know, God fearing man and all that. So family man. So that's something I respect about him. And then just the fact that um he's played here before and he's been in our shoes. So I mean, I think sure everybody says that he's been in our shoes. So he kind of knows what we're going through during the two days and the game time situations and. And so he's been there, so he can really kind of relate to how we're feeling. And when we tell him something, he's been there. So he could tell us him being successful at this level and the next level. He could tell us how to um, prepare, get our minds and bodies prepared for, you know, competition and competing at a high level. So. Somebody I really looked up to um, was my godfather. Um, my godfather, he uh, passed away a couple of years ago, but he played um, for Oklahoma and everything, so uh, Leroy Sammy played. So I really looked up to him growing up, um, 
on and off the field, just seeing what kind of person he was and him being the top player in the NFL and all that, just how he handled himself on and off the field. So that's somebody I really um, looked up to growing up, and I, you know, I try to follow in his footsteps if I can in terms of how he is as a role model. So. Well, I played other sports. I played, um, the first sport I played was soccer. Um, then I played baseball for a little bit and um, basketball. Basketball was my, actually my love, and then I just stopped growing, so I couldn't really play it anymore. But then football came into play, and I really started um, liking it, and um, you know, I was pretty good at it, so. Nah, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, of course, I, you know, of course you're gonna say that, but you know, I feel like I am, of course. But um, you know, it's, it's all fun. We go out there and play and compete and just have a good time. Well, not scoring definitely makes you hungry to score, but um, I think that just like I said, I, I feel like I got experience last year. And like I said, I was able to get my got my feet wet in terms of playing at this level and knowing what to expect week in and week out, how to prepare for a team and how to go out there and um, compete at a high level. Um, so I, th I think last year really just got my feet wet and really knowing now um, what I have to do to improve upon that. And really, you know, not being satisfied. I think that's the key thing, not being satisfied and never being satisfied and complacent. So that's my attitude going in, like I said, forgetting what happened last year, really focusing in on this year, this new year. So really just going in and competing this year and, I'm doing everything I can to help my team out to win. Hopefully, you know, win some harder games. So, just really, just Dope Campbell Stadium. Period. In general, I just remember just all watching it on TV. And I remember the first time I came here, um, I was like, been amazed about how much, you know, energy there was in the building and um, how much the, you know the fan support the uh, university and the city of Tallahassee. Period. So. Um, it felt good just knowing that and growing up on that, so. Um, it's definitely great because it, it brings out the best thing, um, knowing that you have <laughs> other guys that could also play as well. Um, I think it could help the team out, um, just having so many guys going in and out. But it, it brings out the best competition in you. Um, I think it motivates a lot of the guys a lot of us knowing that, you know, the guy next to you could play as well as, you know, so you can't take any plays off really, you know. Um, just knowing that is automatically, I feel like, going to bring out, you know, I could tell already in the um, off-season condition, you know, where we're training, we're always competing and, um, you know, trying trying to get each, you know, help each other get better. So, um, you do that, I feel like that's definitely something that um, is the strength, is, you know, the good thing about having a good uh, or talented receiving core, so. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Fan Game. Want to win a Mazda CX-5? Visit Facebook.com slash Share a Little Sunshine. Camping World of Tallahassee. Best manufacturers. Best floor plans. Best pricing. Florida State with a commanding 38-0 lead over Wake Forest at half. And, and obviously, Coach, when I talked to you at intermission, I said, what do you want to see? You said you want to see the same thing, another dominant performance in the second half. We did defensively, offensively. We come out and sputtered a little bit. I, I wasn't happy. We, we ran the ball and tried to throw the ball. When our protection broke down, we missed a throw here and there in our timing. But I still thought we kept focus. And then they, they got their feet back on the ground, had a good drive. Defense continued to play well in special teams. I still think we dominated. Let's take a look at these uh, second half highlights. Obviously, you get the ball to start things. Yep, and they kicked off. And I was hoping to get a kickoff return, but their kicker, he kicked most, he had kicked six or nine going in the game like that. Here, run a little, little screen play right here to uh, Lonnie Pryor. Been doing a great job blocking. We mix it in with the runs off the runs we'd had earlier, and Lonnie made a great job in, out in the flat with the ball. And uh, you know, Lonnie just blocks, catches, runs, does everything for us. Here, we miss a little out throw, two reasons. One, EJ throws it. We throw it to a spot two yards from the sideline. Rodney's got to get there, and he's got to get there quicker. And uh, EJ just sticking on my hair more, but it was. 
wasn't as bad as, 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 as the throw as I thought once I saw the film. Here we, we missed a block. They started running that stretch play, so we had to go back to our inside zone. Here we got pressure. Had, wanted to get the ball down the field, but EJ checked it down to his third guy. They covered it down the field. That's good. Adds eight yards to your punt. We were in a, a yard and a half from getting a first down. Sometimes that back will break that play. I thought it was a good read on the play. Here, uh, Christian Jones doing a great job. He and Everett, Max, and I take Aunt Mc, getting Ant McLeod back inside, go with Timmy Jernigan and those guys. Boy, they were dominant. Great play by Nick Wason. Got his hand in there on the slant right on a third down play and uh, did a great job deflecting. Here we got a nice play action. See here, we miss a block. See, the, the, the backer was supposed to be blocked right there, and we had the tight end coming wide open in the middle of the field, and it was very disappointing. He just comes back, gets part of it back right here, gets about six or eight yards, get it to a third and makeable situation. And uh, we have a busted route right here. We're supposed to have, have a vertical with a little square in, and we don't get it. And uh, so EJ had to eat it down. And uh, we, it, what it was, it wasn't a busted route. It must have been a missed signal. The guy just missed a signal, and we signaled out to him. And we got to get that cleared up. That's, that, that's, that's a coaching issue, and it's my fault. We're doing a good job on defense right here. Uh, getting good leverage on the nakeds. keeping Now here, they, they pushed us down. Now I'll tell you what, what a great play by their guy. What a great play getting his foot. And it was funny, when it hit, they called it out. And I looked down to Mark. I said, they're going to review this. It's going to be good because it happened right in front of me. I saw him get his foot down. It was a good play. Bjorn, get, we get it too far up the field, but great job by Ronald Darby. Boy, he's playing good as a freshman now. That guy can cover. Great job by Bjorn. Good leverage on the ball everywhere we're going. Almost caused a fumble there and got it back. Uh, pressure tank, Caradine coming. There's Bjorn. They throw a little flat pass out here. And I think Xavier Xavier gets gets the guy out of bounds. I think they got the first down on that one. It came right there to the edge. We get a boot. Bjorn fighting back outside. See what they're doing though. They're not letting the quarterback sit down. Great play by Xavier and uh, Lamarcus back in the back end. Almost had a pick. They're not letting that quarterback when he got out of the pocket to really sit and have time. They were getting after him very quickly. Draw play. We did a great job of recognizing draw plays and pressing the inside number of our his offensive lineman not not rushing too far up the field once we recognize it collapsing the holes. Good play action, found Nick O'Leary. We had three or four things in Nick. We just couldn't get him the ball earlier in the game, and, and uh, Nick's going to have a big year for us, and we need him to. And uh, there's a solid job blocking. We've got to keep getting that ball to him. James Wilder here on that stretch play. He sticks it up inside, boy, and just keeps – he always gets those two extra yards yeah, when he, he gets does. hit. Big, strong guy. He had 94 yards on the day. Here we come back out, a little screen play again to Lonnie Pryor. We've got a nice little drive here. We wanted to establish a drive. Mix it up, run, pass. Had a good ratio here. Mix some screens and nakeds and boots in here a little bit. Uh, a nice throw right here. It's the same out route we had earlier, so we throw it to the side, unlike we had before that we missed earlier. Made a good throw right there to Rashad Green. Made a nice play. Good play action. Missed a – oh, uh, this wasn't a play. I'm sorry, Rashad. The guy come over Rashad. Rashad's got to snap that route off a little cleaner and fight back to the ball. We can get it. it was a good throw. The guy that had good coverage on too. Here's a full blitz. EJ hanging in the pocket. We had a hot route. He dumped it to the back inside on a third and five, and they did a nice job of drifting away from pressure and handled the blitz. Picking it up. Here we have a uh, nice – we missed the block. Lyman got tied up inside. If we got out, we had a jailbreak screen there. We thought we had a chance to get a big play, but we got three or four yards out of it. Get in a makeable uh, third down here. EJ did a great job of looking off the backer, isolated him, got 45 out of the play. McCurl flat read the backside and uh, had the front side, the backside route, and he had his choice, and he went to the backside, which was correct. Here we get a play action. I want to say Nick stick this route, but I want to say EJ stick that ball a little bit harder. And that short side, you can't lay it quite so much. He needs to stick that ball just a little harder. We'd had a touchdown. Nick needs to stick his foot in the ground on the route just a little bit better. We got to execute. Third down, we picked it back up right here, though. EJ found uh, Kenny Shaw in the back of the end zone. Kenny made a bad mistake there. You don't need to catch a ball when you're on an inline in your body. You got to reach out with your hands. It allows you to work your feet more. When you catch the ball in your body, you have a tendency to drift backwards, and it puts you on the out of bounds line. We got to be stronger on that. And he. He could have broke the route off a little farther inside like we wanted, but I'll tell you what, here's those special teams again. Wow, they're getting down the field. Chad Abrams right here. Those guys did a great job being physical and, it's and got, setting the edge. It's got to be demoralizing for the opponent to not even get, a, get really a sniff on the returns. It is. I mean, it, 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 it's something we, we continually work on and win that field position battle. It helps our defense big time. And, of course, it ends up helping the offense because we get it back a better field position. Here they are moving it. Good job inside. Good job. There's Tajman Stevens inside. Uh, Terrence Smith inside. You've seen some of those guys really get some play. There's Chris Casher on a big rush, forced a screen play out there. And there's Keelan Smith, a young freshman, Carlos Williams. There's Niall Lawrence Stamp here. We had Eddie Goldman in the game. We had Mario Edwards played early. He played in the first half of the game. Those guys all got uh, snaps in the beginning of the game. Real. Clint come in, throw a nice out right here to KB. KB didn't need to double catch it, but he got physical and got north-south. Keep getting the ball in his hands. We just got to keep putting it in his hands and making good things happen. There's Happy Litter, young tight at the tight end transferred in from Penn State, did a great job. There's a Wilder just keeps pushing that pile five, six at a time. And we got fifth. Throw another out route right here to KB. What a great catch. The ball's behind him. Fights it, keeps great ball security, and then, then fights his way for another 
four or five yards once he gets it. Doesn't that defender have to disengage once the See, helmet comes I, I, That's what I asked too. After it's, and that's hard to do for that guy too. Here we get a nice run by Wilder. But I don't know, once you're engaged, if you have to disengage, I don't know the, the rule. I know you're supposed to stop if your helmet comes off, but how do you do that when you got a hold of a guy? Right, yeah. <laughs> Here, a nice check by Clint. We checked it back the other way. He read the blitz, checked it back away from the blitz. Wilder got a good block. And there's Debrell Smiley getting the touchdown run. Had another a very good run. There's Jacob Faircrew in the game. We got uh, Faircloth in the game. We've got a lot of young guys. We've got Austin Barron at center, Bobby Hart. And we had, um, and then uh, Menelik was also playing tackle in that game, along with uh, Christo and Haplett tight end. Good job on defense right there. Terrence Smith and those guys doing a good job. Well, I see Terrence Smith right here. Watch him shoot through. There's going to be another great young linebacker now. He's a freshman. That guy's going to be a really good football player. There's Joe Demps in the game. Reggie Northup's going to be a good player. Casher getting that rush. You can see that You can see that burst in that boy. Carlos Williams flying in, making a play right Speaking there. Speaking of burst, yeah. Yeah. He kind of, there's Eddie, Big Eddie in there. And uh, Clint comes back, got a nice corner route. They squatted. KB collisioned it. Boy, it's nice to have that wingspan. <laughs> okay, he's just smiling, having fun. <laughs> That's what it's all about. There we go. Good run by James. See, James got deceiving speed now. He gets that edge a lot more than people think. He, he can run. He can run. Great job by Hapula right there blocking on the edge. Uh, here we go. Good block backside. Devontae Freeman. Good job by uh, Debrell Smiley. 300. 385 yards rushing in the game. That's, that's pretty good now. That's pretty good. Devontae Freeman, he had a couple really nice and big run for the half. There's a nice eight-yard run. Guy's a really good football player, too. Oh, I like seeing him bounce that thing just a hair wider if we could have got it. But, again, got about six or seven up inside. And he, I'll tell you, for, he runs great between those tackles now. He's a heck of a player. I mean, a heck of a player. There's Big Eddie Goldman. Now the young freshman, those freshman D linemen, we got to get them ready because it's going. They're going to be hopefully as we get better during the year, we'll use them more and more. Great job by Giorgio Newberry pressing up. They got the option; they couldn't get the pitch off. Giorgio messed it all up right there, and uh, all those young guys. Here we go, Jacob Coker in the game. Now watch Jake get a block right here. Jake takes a guy down, big Jake at court, and then they got a little tussle there on the sideline. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Jake, I'm gonna tell you, he's going to be a good player, good, big, strong, athletic guy. Good run by Mr. Wilder again. Um, I think Jake throws a bubble right here. Another handoff right here. We just we're just keeping the ball on the ground. Just keep just keep pounding it, eating the clock, getting yards. Playing a third string quarterback in a conference game that's a rarity. It really is. Then got the ball out to Christian Green right here. Good block. There's Josh Gary. Did a real nice job of getting the block out there. It's great to see Josh back after the uh, the uh, surgery he had. And I tell you, there's one of the class guys in football, Jim Grove. He he is a great great human being, great coach, and have a lot of respect for Jim and his teams. And they always play very well. And uh, wish him the best of luck the rest of the season. 52 nothing. the final score, Coach. Shutouts are hard to come by, and oh, your Lord. defense has posted two in a row. So, tip of the cap to those guys and Mark Stoops. It's been amazing. They've done a great job along with that. And, and I, as I say it before, our special teams has a lot to do with that, too. The field position battles we win defensively, we're doing an unbelievable job dominating. But we are in special teams, too, and we're winning those field position battles, pinning guys back inside the 10. The tw I, I, I haven't looked at it. I'd like to look at the average starting field position of the other team. Uh, from what we have, from the way our punters are punting, mm -hmm. our kicker is kicking the ball down, we're covering, and then the way our defense is playing and getting the ball back to our offense, it, it, th th those two phases are doing a great job. Yeah, no question. Let's look back at the biggest play of the second half now, touchdown pass. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Get the best seats in the house with Xfinity. You're home for the most live sports. It's the Kenny Shaw 17-yard touchdown catch. We talked about it a little bit here in, in terms of, uh, of his route, and he drifted a little bit toward the back, but, but EJ hit him. It did, it did. We had, a, we had a red Rodney trying to come across the middle, and he was a second man in the progression, and uh, he made a run, and EJ saw it and uh, made the nice throw. Like I said, Kenny should have been inside, but we got it done. Kenny's playing good football now, and uh, he's going to heck of a player, block him well, and uh, he can be going to be a big player for us all year. Florida State gets the victory, goes to 3-0, and 1-0 and in the ACC, and as you win, the next game always gets bigger, and this one on the horizon is a huge one against Clemson. We'll talk about that matchup with the Tigers when we come back here on the Jimbo Fisher Show, presented by AT&T. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. It's time for Seminole Insider, presented by Hyundai. Inside information for the loyal fan.
loving Florida State football, and my love for this university runs deep. When I heard that one of our own was blindsided by a rare disease called Fanconi anemia, I stepped up to help. What will you do to help the Fishers with Kids First Fund? Will you visit the website, join on Facebook and Twitter, wear Kids First Fund merchandise? We are a Seminole family. When one of our own gets knocked down, we step up. Join me, Christian Ponder, and my friend Ethan in saying, I fight Fanconi. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show presented by AT&T is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics. Welcome back Seminole fans. We're joined as always by the head chef of Florida State Athletics, Joyce Simons, and today we're going to be making everyone's favorite. If you're a red-blooded American, you love steak, you love uh, beef tenderloin, commonly more known as filet. We're going to be focusing on lean meat and what that does from a nutritious aspect. Correct, yeah. Today I have a great portion of steak for you. It's a filet. Um, as you can see, there's really no fat on it. It's a very lean cut. So with those other cuts, maybe like ribeye, where you can see a lot of the white marbling around it, all that fat's gone. and It's going to leave you with less calories and a better portion of steak. So um, today we're going to, I'm going to show you how to sear a steak, cook it in the oven, and then um, get maximum flavor out of what you have. So I'm going to turn on my pan, put a little oil in it, and then we're going to season our steak. So we have this great filet, and we're going to push, put a rub on a plate, and then we're going to do both sides of the steak. So just shake it off. We want to make sure it has great um, coating on each side, because this is all the flavor that you're going to get. And, um, you want to have as much as possible. This rub has some salt and pepper in it, so you don't, don't even have to do extra salt and pepper on your steak. That's going to create that nice little crust on the outside too. If you put it, if you put that on there, doesn't it? It creates kind of an extra, I guess, another layer, a more, I guess, another flavor layer, I guess, if you will. Yeah. So um, something we're going to do with our steak is, so we're going to put it in a pan with some oil. You're going to hear it sizzle, and some people are afraid of the sound of sizzling, but all that sizzling and browning is flavor. And you really want to get all the brown you can on your steak without burning it, and that just adds tons of flavor. So we're going to sear it on both sides, and then right before it goes in the oven, we're going to add some mushrooms to our pan. And they're going to soak up any extra fat, and this is an easy way to roast them. And then we're going to put some thyme in. And thyme adds all the flavor you need to the mushrooms, and the mushrooms will soak up a little extra fat from your filet too. So once our steak has done, is done searing and comes out of the oven, you'll see the mushrooms are really nice and brown and that the steak has browned on both sides really well. Then we're going to add two pats of butter into it, just like that, and they're going to melt over our mushrooms. We're just going to add them, and that'll be really all the fat we have in this dish. So you're going to have a great plate with some steak and some delicious roasted mushrooms. 
So once our steak is done and our butter has melted, something I like to plate it with is some carrots. Today we have some artisan carrots. We have a yellow and a purple, something a little different to add color to your plate. We're just gonna take the steak. You can see it's nice and juicy. It's browned on both sides without burning. We're gonna put that down. We're gonna whip around our butter a little bit. This, at this point, you can take your time out. We'll just discard that. And then we can even use your tongs as a spoon. And you're just gonna set your mushrooms on top of your dish. It's gonna have tons of flavor with, with a little bit of fat. Do you wanna try that? Absolutely. Scott? See I mean, how it tastes? Finishing, finishing it off in the oven really does help too. Cause I mean, you can almost get that, that really nice seared texture on the outside. And yeah. then when you put, and then it's, it's still nice and you can take a look at that. It's still nice and moist on the inside. Yeah. Even you put it in the oven. Nice big piece, obviously. You can control your time, and you don't necessarily have to have a grill to have a great steak. Mm, that's a fantastic steak. All that flavor goes right into the steak. That yeah. seared on the outside, mm, that was perfect. Yeah, and you don't necessarily have to do it with mushrooms if you don't like. You can do it with whatever vegetable. That steak's just got great flavor. That lean meat, the grass-fed beef, there's nothing better than that. Thanks again. This is an awesome recipe. And, of course, you can get all the recipes, all the great information from Joyce Simons right now by visiting Seminoles.com. We'll see you back here next week. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Fan Game. Want to win a Mazda CX-5? Visit facebook.com slash share a little sunshine. Camping World of Tallahassee. Best manufacturers. Best floor plans. Best pricing. Welcome back, Tom Block, Coach Jimbo Fisher. Well, the stage is set, Coach, as we get to our Camping World look ahead. You've got uh, College Game Day rolling in for a Saturday showdown, mm -hmm. 8 o'clock primetime kick, top 10 battle, number 4, number 10. I think I've said enough. It's FSU Clemson. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it's the next big game. Uh, you know, it's, it's an ACC game. It's, a in the, it's an interconference game, interdivisional game, which makes it a double whammy, as I like to say. Uh, you know, it's an important game in the beginning of this season. It's one that we need to win and we need to play very well in. A lot of things we could talk about in this, but when you look at the statistics, uh, Clemson has Andre Ellington, who's leading the league in rushing. Yes. DeAndre Hopkins is leading the league in receiving. Same. Not talking about Sammy Watkins, who's played one game. And then yeah. Taj Boyd is second in the league behind EJ in pass efficiency. Exactly. They, 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 they can run it. They can throw it. They're big and physical. They understand, they're well coached. Their special teams do a great job. They're, they got a young kicker now who, I come out of high school, kicks it a mile uh, defensively. They got great. They're big up front. They're athletic in the, in the secondary and in the linebacker. They can run. I mean, they're a complete football team. They're a top ten football team for a reason. And uh, you know, Dabo does a great job coaching them. Well, in last year's game, obviously went in Clemson's favor. That was at Death Valley. This time, the Tigers are in Tallahassee, and I think everybody's expecting that this is going to be a, a nip and tuck type game too. And it's a pivotal game early in the conference. It season. really is. I mean, like I say, it, it, it's it's an ACC game. It's an interdivisional game. So I mean, it's huge. Who can get control of this side at least, or, or be put itself in position because it's it's one of the big games you have to play every year, as all ACC games are. But uh, you know, it'd be a great. It's a great challenge for our team. I think it's coming at the right time. And uh, I'm anxious to watch our guys not just play the game, I'm anxious to how we prepare to play this game. I think that's going to be very important. And we don't play this game on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We prepare to play it so we can play it on Saturday. All right. Stay focused and take care of Clemson. Take care of business this week. It's going to be a big atmosphere at Doe Campbell Stadium on Saturday. Of course, we'll have a look back at that game on next week's Jimbo Fisher Show. Still a little bit more time to go, and uh, we'll get to that on the other side of this break. So stay with us. The Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T continues in a moment. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by SunTrust, the official bank of the Florida State Seminoles. And by Nick's Toggery provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe.
Welcome back. Your chance now to ask a question of Coach Fisher. And Bill Long from Orlando has a question for you, and pretty appropriate this week, I'd say. We have multiple styles of running backs on the FSU team. How important is it to have back the home run threat that is Chris Thompson? I'm going to tell you now, when you can call one play <laughs> and you score, and you don't have to call another one, as a play caller, you love it. I mean, and, and to me, that's the key in today. You know, when you do get those opportunities to hit those big plays and get in green grass, and then when you can finish them with touchdowns and not get caught and have to, you know, maybe have to run more plays and possibly turn it over, kick a field goal, not get your touchdown. I mean, when you get those opportunities against great teams, you have to score touchdowns. And those guys that can put it in the end zone on those long plays, you know, it's critical. Getting Chris back was huge for us. Not only just his home run ability, though, but his ability to pick up blitzes, his intelligence. And I'm going to tell you, he's a much more every down back than people give him credit for. He's a tough runner now. Yeah, he's, he's fun to watch and a great story to see him come back from what could have been a devastating injury. Coach, you talk a lot about, uh, you know, clearing the clutter, being focused, exactly. uh, that sort of thing. This is uh, as important this week as any other week as you get ready for Clemson. There's no doubt because you get caught up in everything but the game. You know, you're supposed to win. This guy's coming here. This people are coming here. I got family coming to the game. I got this coming to the game, game days. What does that matter? Why are they coming here? They're coming here to watch the game. So prepare for the game, play the game, eliminate things that don't matter, and get ready to play. All right, it's going to be fun. Great atmosphere coming this Saturday night, 8 o'clock at Doak Campbell Stadium. We'll have the recap for you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. We'll see you then.